All right, well, tomorrow I head off to the Alvord Desert to start off the Eastern Oregon trip. But tonight I'm just overnighting at a friend's house in Bend, and this is the accommodations, this totally charming vintage trailer. Well, this is a really nice way to start the trip. I'm a couple of hours closer to the destination, and uh, after a good night's sleep where I haven't been up late doing final preparations, I can get a nice early start tomorrow. This is the first leg of what will be my most ambitious adventure ever, setting out across the vast open deserts of eastern Oregon over the course of a week-long expedition in search of dramatic scenery in remote corners of the state. While most of my travel and exploration will be solo, I have plans to camp with a few different friends on a few of the nights. Tonight is one of those nights. Friends of mine from Oregon, Nevada, and California all met up at the Alvord Desert yesterday, and that will be my first stop on this trek. I'm looking forward to hanging out with this whole crew tonight. I'm eager to get to the Alvord and spend some time catching up with my friends, but I just noticed some waypoints I had completely forgotten I'd entered into Gaia GPS. It requires a minor detour along a side road, but it's early in the day, so I'm going to check it out. It says something about some ruins. This is not the ruins that we found last year when we were out here. So um, I'm just going to poke up and see if there's actually anything there. Oh, look at that. There is something out there. All right, let's go check that out. Oh. Oh, there's some kind of bees nesting in there. Oh, check this out. That's really cool. I have a second point marked on here as well. And I think it's something else that I spotted in satellite photos. Oh, I found the little road, but it is almost invisible. You can just barely see it going through there. This one's even nicer. Much more preserved. <laughs> oh, one more cool little artifact I found here, just right next to the road. Look at this. I don't know, I don't know what that's the door off of. George from Southwest Idaho Overlanding, who told me that he thought there were some ruins right along this road here. Sure enough, George, there were. Any trip to the Alvord Desert pretty much requires a stop at Field Station. It's the only gas anywhere near here, and the burgers and shakes are a favorite among those who visit the area. And well, there it is. The Alvord Desert is an immense lake bed that is just hard, dry dirt for a good part of the year. Almost entirely BLM land, the Alvord is a vast, roadless area that provides a unique driving experience, as nearly the entire lake bed can be driven in the dry months. This is actually one of those places that people come to attempt land speed records. It's so immense that even though there are literally hundreds of people out here this weekend for the summer solstice, it still feels open and empty and desolate.
incredible. You can just drive and drive and drive. It just keeps going and going and going. It's so fun. So I don't actually know where the crew is camped. I think they're over on the other side someplace. But uh, last time I was here, I didn't have a huge amount of time to explore, and I never even made it up to sort of the northeast end of the playa. So I'm just gonna sort of work my way around and assume that I'm gonna stumble on them at some point. I think they're pretty close to one of the shores, and so I'll work my way along the far shore, and I'm sure I'll run across them, and I'm sure I'll run across them. I'm sure I'll run across them. Water is to be avoided on the Alvard. The mud here is reputed to stymie even the most capable of 4x4s. I saw a camp over here. Uh, there's an RV. I don't think that's my camp. I don't think that's my crew. Well, sure, why not? Plenty of room to take off or land an airplane out here. As I could see that I could drive and I didn't spot the camp of course if they're out exploring or whatever but I thought I would see I thought I would see a tent that I would recognize at least I'll keep poking at it Pushed even further north in case I didn't get far enough north. The fringes of the Alvert are a labyrinth of shrubs encroaching on the lake bed, which is generally a better option for camping than out in the middle of the playa. So I wasn't surprised to see on social media that my friends had camped along the shrubby shore last night. Should make it easy to find them just by following the perimeter of the lake bed. All right, I'm definitely retracing my steps here. Try again. I'm surprised I didn't find them after doing a complete tour of the lake. It was kind of fun at first. It was like a little treasure hunt. Yesterday, Jason posted an Instagram story from their campsite. And I could tell that they were camped along the bushes, along the edge. I'm, I'm trying to find that, that same vista of that sort of mesa with a drop-off. If I can find that view, I'll find camp. I've been at it for like two hours. I think I've driven about a hundred miles back and forth and around and around. I'm starting to think maybe they decided to go camp someplace else tonight and the message just didn't get through to me because I have no service. Anyway, it's not fun anymore. I've driven by some of these camps three, four, or five times now. These people must think I'm nuts. Let me just find a place to camp and it's a bummer though, because I was really looking forward to seeing everybody. I don't know, I've about had it with driving around. I'm just burning through my gas and... All right, well I just got enough signal to have a message come through. And Ed, actually, this morning at 11.45, it looks like, sent me coordinates. Here's the desert that I've been, I just spent half a tank of gas driving around. And they're actually here, which is way, way off over on the other side of that. Um, and I'm guessing they're probably at the hot springs. Um, I think I'm gonna try and go join them there because I just, wasn't feeling super inspired to stay here by myself. I was really hoping to see everybody. And I still got plenty of hours of daylight left. So I'm gonna go back to fields. I'm gonna gas back up. I'm hoping that I'm interpreting it correctly and I'll remember my way back into where that hot spring is. 
All right, I couldn't get enough internet to get anything to load up. So I'm just gonna have to go on memory from last year. I've done this once before and I'm 98% positive I'm on the right road. And I think I'll recognize there's a couple of turns, but I think I'll recognize them. Bit of adventure here to try and find those guys. They're up there in the hill someplace, I think. beautiful out here but there's just it's just featureless there's no roads there's no place to camp there's those hills over there but I cannot find a road up into them I'm gonna run out of BLM land here pretty quick Finally, I've spotted a little trail that leads away from the main road here. This is all BLM land, so the gate is not locked. I can just let myself through and close it behind me and drive on up this little side road to look for a spot to camp for the night. Well, it doesn't look like this road gets up into those craggy hills over there, which would be nice, but at least it gets me off the main road there and out of sight. If I can at least just get up over that rise, even that would be good enough. Well, it's 
not quite what I had planned for tonight, but there's a tent sized space right there. Just pulled right off the road, it's just right there. But I don't think anyone's coming up this road tonight. I'm not gonna lie, today was difficult. It was a lot of work and uh, I definitely was getting tired and frustrated towards the end of the day. This ain't bad though. The Jackery has just been a game changer on these trips. As much as I try, to keep my phone plugged in and my camera batteries plugged in, the drone batteries plugged in. Over the course of the day, I always lose track and I end up at camp with most or all of my devices and batteries completely dead. With the Jackery, I can sit here in camp without turning my car on and I can charge my camera battery, my drone batteries, I'm charging my GoPro, my phone, and my iPad all at once and I can do that night after night after night without ever even having to recharge this thing. Well, six or seven days was a lot of food to pack, and so I had to keep the meals pretty simplified. I'm not doing anything fancy at all during the whole week. Decent dinners, healthy dinners, but yeah, we'll keep it simple and keep it brief. All right, tonight I've got a tuna burger from uh, Wild Grill Foods. They're actually one of my clients. Their burgers, I really love them, and so I'm happy when I end up with some samples that I get to eat also. Well, that was a big day with uh, a lot of adventure, a lot of things that didn't go as planned. But uh, tomorrow's a new day and tomorrow's a new episode. So uh, see you in the next one. <laughs>